My name is Peter Steele. I'm the vocalist and bassist for Typo Negative. How do you feel today? I feel great, actually. I have a little sore throat, but I think I put someone, uh, dirty, I have something dirty in my mouth. It happens. Do you want to divulge what that uh, dirty thing was? Uh, probably from shaking hands for the last week, and I, I bathe once a month whether I need to or not. It's, it's a basic rule that I abide by. It's a pretty good rate, though, once a month. Not bad. Yeah, a, a, a lot of things happen once a month. <laughs> For example, well, sometimes I find myself covered in dirt and leaves in the woods, and I wake up and I've got some kind of meat between my teeth. But so I've been using dental floss lately. Good habits come at any age. Mm -hmm. Good men, especially yeah. for nuns. Yeah. I I heard the good news, and I want to congratulate you. On what? On what being done now. <laughs> oh, you know, being in a solid frame of mind. Did I have? I have returned to the church. There you go. Who's this? JC or AO? Let's go. Yes, um, I stopped drinking a couple of couple of months ago. Congratulations. Uh, well, uh, it didn't really happen on purpose. It. Uh, <clears throat> I got in some trouble with the with the law. Should I look at you or the camera? Me. Or, or like look around like there's something wrong with me? Which there is, but I'll just make. <laughs> should I look at you? You're the boss. I'm no, I'm, I'm I'm the boss. Um, oh, I, I got in some some trouble and uh, like legal, financial, physical trouble, and uh, I realized that alcoholism and uh, drug addiction, which are actually both the same thing. I mean, whether you smoke or drink, it's snort or shoot it. And if it affects your mood and judgment, well, then it's a drug, you know? And women are the ultimate drug, as you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel a hundred times better, you know? I, I, I don't look bad for 67, do I? Gorgeous. <laughs> I know. Maybelline. <laughs> you get a whole box of Maybelline products coming to your van tomorrow. And Revlon, too. And a whole box of Revlon. Mm -hmm. Any specific products I, I, you want to request? I, well, I heard, heard that they do cosmetic experiments on Canadians. Is that, is that true? <laughs> they, they put drops of stuff in their eyes and shit. There was a lot of blind Canadians. So. Animals or, Canadians, I guess, same animals thing. Animals Canadians? Yeah. Well, some, some of the hockey players are animals. Oh, yeah. I like hockey, football. You were an athlete. You. Well, uh, I, I like playing football and hockey. You know. My own balls too. Pocket pool. Pocket pocket pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I guess, how does it feel being, I guess, back, back to yourself, back to who you truly are? Uh, you know, I haven't played soberly in about ten or fifteen years. I mean, when I say soberly, I mean absolutely sober. When um, um actually basically a shy person, believe it or not, you know, this, this, this whole stand-up comedy routine is really just an act because I'm just a big little boy, I'm just a, just a little boy in a big body, you know, so, um, but uh, I ha have always gotten stage fright, I've never liked to speak publicly, and I found that, um, some wine or vodka gave me uh, some liquid courage, you know, and uh, my family is uh, Russian, Polish, Icelandic, Scottish, and Irish, which, I mean, all, the, all these nationalities are, are, are known for their drinking. So uh, a couple of sips of wine before a show turned into a couple of bottles, and my record was tw 12 bottles of wine. I drank four before the show, four during the show, and four after the show. And I did not fall down. I just stayed up and annoyed the fuck out of everybody. <laughs> you never loved me! I'm vomiting on people, you know, pissing in somebody's bunk. Uh, the things you do. But, uh, it's, um, I, I think that that the rest of my body actually gave up on, on, on my brain and just learned to do things themselves. Like now when I play bass, well, not that I ever could, but when I try to play bass, I actually have to think about the next part it, because my, my hands gave up on my brain a long time ago. They're like, fuck, fuck, man, fuck Pete. You, 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 you take the neck, I'll take the pick, all right, and let's go. So 
I've played shows and done things and done a lot of stupid things during blackouts and, you know, being drunk and stuff like that that I regret. I, I said a lot of stuff. I, I did a lot of things. I mean, not like malice. And, I mean, not like, you know, kicking the shit out of people, but just being in, inconsiderate. And now being sober and being around, you know, a lot of drunk people, uh, it's kind of embarrassing that that's, that's what, what I was like. You know, I'm an, I'm an addict. You know, I can't moderate. There is no such thing as just one drink for me. I just can't have a glass of wine before going off stage and that's it. Now, I ain't the whole vineyard, you know? We are a hardcore, rooted um, political video magazine. Okay. So my roots are in hardcore. Go back to the early mid-90s. And um, I just love hardcore music. I, I love hardcore myself. And I guess I'd like to know, because there's some message boards who uh, have a lot of people who are going to your uh, shows in this tour, and they're all saying how great the shows are. Well, that's because you have to threaten the right people. It goes a long way. So who are some of these uh, people who control things that you that you threatened? No, I was, that, that was a joke, of I, course. I know. Um, apparently, when, when you're, you're, you're drunk, you don't realize how, how badly you're playing and how, how badly you're singing. And... Uh, People have told me that I sound much better and, and I'm playing much better. I don't really see it as, as much as other people do because I was drunk. Um, but I also realize that I'm primarily responsible for almost destroying this band. Um, the last five years of tours have, have, have been full of coke and alcohol. And I didn't think, I think it was a parent. I was like, oh, don't, they'll, they'll never know. And then there's like a camera close up on me, like with a snowball up my nose. Oh, they'll never know. <laughs> You're right. And um, I know that I, I have personally disappointed a lot of people. And uh, a lot of fans ask why, why Josh isn't here. Josh isn't here because he's smart. You know, because uh, he has a wife and kids. And I, I, I represent actually two-fifths of the band. Of course, I sing and play bass, and you know, guitar, drums, keyboards. So if I'm fucked up, almost half the band's fucked up. So like, there goes the show. So he's he's resorted to Plan B. He he's he's going to school to uh, become an EMT, paramedic. And uh, I, you know, his his family comes has to come before everything, you know, including his employment and. Um, Six months ago, I, I wouldn't depend upon me, really. So I don't blame him. You know, I, I, I have plan B, C, D, and E, you know, down the line because this can't go on forever, you know. But, um, so I'm, I'm trying to rectify the damage that I've done okay. by, by just doing the best job that I can and not drinking. And it's, it's not easy. You know, like there's no such thing as constipation and type of negative because we, because we all have have stage fright. No, I gotta go bad. I gotta go really bad. No, I was here first. You know, so scared shit. Being sober, thinking back to your very young days and your roots in in the New York scene. Yeah. I guess your memory is kind of reactivated to some degree. Those memories are actually very clear. Um, I was like kind of like a weekend warrior. I, I worked for the city back home for the past department of, of New York. I worked in Brooklyn. And uh, so I would go out, out with my friends and, you know, go see bands, CBGBs, Rock, Rock Hotel, you know, go see um, Agnostic Front, Crow Mags, Nihilistics, Murphy's Law, all that stuff. And, and yet, you know, we're pretty wasted, but... Um, I had always wondered I, what was going to happen when I quit my job and went full time with, with the band because my job actually kept me un, under control because I, I was very proud of, of, of what I was doing and I let nothing in, in, interfere with, with my workouts, my job, you know, taking care of myself and being responsible. 
And then when I, when I quit, my, quit my job working for the city, now all of a sudden I have all this time on my hands and all, all this attention. And, you know, idle hands are the work of Satan. And I must tell you, somebody down here likes me. The devil takes care of her own. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering what issues concern you the most, um, I guess, both in your uh, city, globally, more at large. In Carnivore, you were pretty... Well, yeah, we, uh, we, were, we, we were labeled both fascist and communist. We were just capitalists, ha uh -huh. <laughs> you know. Um, well, you know, I, I I spent ten years on a on a futon, drunk, watching Law and Order. I can recite every line back. I mean, backwards, upside down, inside out. So current issues, I'm not really up on. I mean, is it is it true that Osama is the president? It's true. Osama is yeah. the president, yeah. not Obama. No. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's how much I know. No, I mean, um, I, I got myself in trouble with, with the law, so I, I, I'm, I'm not allowed to vote anymore. Oh, big deal. As if I'm going to make a difference, you know. Um, what, what issues concern me? Um, I think what, what children are, are exposed to. Uh, through through the media and how te technology is taken over. Like I, when I was a kid, we we play street hockey, we we play football, basketball, you know, uh, throw a ball around it after school, something, you know. Now kids, uh, I mean, they, they they got the TV on, they got headphones on, and they're doing something on the computer or with with, with some game. And uh, I read some article recently that like ninety percent of third graders can't read in a long time. Uh, you know, because every everything is digital. You know, but I, I I don't even know know how to use a computer properly. I mean, I can ask a four year old who who can do it like one two three, but I'm I'm still an, an analog person, not a digital person. So um. I guess, in, in essence, when, when I do have children, I'm going to have a, a lot of explaining to do about my behavior. And, and my answer is going to be, well, learn from my mistakes. You know, yeah. that's, that's what a parent is for, I believe. And, uh, of course, as you know, the best parents have no children. You know, they can tell other people how to raise their kids, but, oh, you should do that. Yeah, well, you, you try waking up in, like, a pool of vomit and, uh, you know, Walking around with a smile on your face all day, that's not going to happen. You know, there, there is, is such a thing that call, that called a neutron bomb. And, and this is not a threat, this is a fact. It's, it's a bomb that, when activated, interferes with electromagnetism, meaning all of technology stops. Like, nothing works. You can't start your car, digital watch, forget about it. You pick up the phone, your cell phone, nothing works. If, if, if that happened, what would people do? Nobody has any survival skills. Yeah. Everybody's got GPS. I mean, just to find out where the nearest Starbucks is. You know, shit, shit like that. Yeah. And um, uh, <clears throat> I, I, I would just be, be very curious to see what, what would happen if all technology was taken away. You know, I, I think that this is truly the the end of civilization. Really, yeah. I believe yeah. that ev everyone is against everyone. The ultimate conspiracy. Yeah, are they pit against each other by a particular? That, uh, that was extreme sarcasm I was utilizing. No, but it's at that, at, at, at that moment. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. When when I was using lots of coke, I mean, I, I was your typical paranoid drug addict, you know, thinking that there were cameras in, in the shower heads and like, you know, making sure that I turned a certain way, like when I uh, toweled my balls off so that the camera couldn't see me, I was just really, really crazy. So, I, as far as c conspiracies go, I, I think that, that they certainly exist, but I have to start with, with myself first, you know, and um, even though the, the, the drugs are out of me, it's made me think differently. I mean, I, I've become a very paranoid person, but maybe I have a reason to be paranoid. I don't know. So, like AA says, and NA, and 
and triple A, you know, take one one minute, one one day at a time. So that's what I'm trying to do. What other kind of, I guess, wisdom can you offer the youth out there who are struggling, having a tough time facing their lives and facing the future? Um, I think uh, believing in God, especially Jesus Christ, is very important. Um, God doesn't have to be the old man, you know, with a long beard in, in the sky, you know, sitting on a throne, and, you know, you know, the kicking the devil in the head. Uh, he, he, he can, he or she can, can be, be with whatever you want. I just think that everybody should, should really understand that, um, that everyone is here for some greater good. It doesn't have to be your own or my own, and we're, we're all, all part of God's plan. And, um, I, I pray, and this is going to sound very strange, but I pray for more pain, because God only gives the heaviest stones to those who can lift them. And my name, Peter, happens to me, Rock. That's real. And I used to be stoned, so I went from dope to pope. You're back. More or less. Well, it's my front. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you see yourself? In the next five, ten years, what's going to happen for you in the future, for your band, for yourself? World domination. One, two, three. Back to the carnivore. Communist Nazi. This way you can left, right, right wing, left wing, chicken wing. Communism, fascism, botulism, number one. Everybody gets free salmonella. You're a true character. You're. I've been told. Yeah. How has it affected? I guess being the age you are, um, how people relate to you, how young people relate to you. <clears throat> well, I have two two things to, uh, well, probably more than two things to um, say about that. Being being drunk and stoned for for ten years, I mean, uh, days turned in, into weeks, into months. I mean, I I woke up, I I went to sleep yesterday. I was thirty seven. I woke up a couple of months ago, I was 47, and I was so, excuse me for saying, fucked up all the time that I would, I would blame like aches and pains and you know, this and that. Well, I probably fell down a flight of stairs or something, which, you know, which I, I've done, like, and, you know, got like a splatter with battery acid, you know, and shit like that. And, um, but what has happened is, uh, it happening is as you get older, time goes by faster, and it just, sickens me how, 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 how much time I, I've wasted because addiction is so selfish and how many people it's, it's affected negatively. So, but getting back to your previous question, all, all I can say to, to the youth today is, is have faith that, that when bad things happen to you, that, that, that I believe in, in an afterlife, that it's, it's better to suffer here on earth then what awaits you. So that's why I pray for pain. And I get it. I do. Any final words to offer people out there, uh, the fans out there, any messages, things you want to express some, some solidarity with, any movements, any critical final words to offer? Treat each other the way you'd like to be treated. That's all. You're a good man. Thanks. Thank you again. See ya.